three times more addictive than heroin. Two, li two highly addictive compounds. Alcohol and the addictive brain. And that's why this brain doesn't understand this brain, because this brain says, come on, why can't you just have a glass of wine? Why can't you just have a glass of wine for dinner? And this brain doesn't understand this brain, because this brain says to that brain, how did you order that $8 glass of wine and you didn't finish it? Because they, whether it's $8 or it's free, because this brain receives a completely different compound from the same glass of wine than this brain. So what the IV infusions do by rebuilding the mechanism is that it helps the brain from producing aldehydes anymore. So if you take this piece out of the equation, then this brain is like this brain. Well, if you tell this brain they shouldn't drink alcohol anymore, it's not healthy for it. This brain says, well, whatever, I didn't really like it in the first place. If you try to tell this brain not to drink anymore before you do the IV treatments, it's like saying, take a deep breath and that's the last breath you get. I mean, this brain truly believes this person that they can't breathe unless they have their brain altering substance. So I'm going to show you with my fingers how the IVs work. Okay, The only difference between these two brains at birth is the non-addictive brain is born with about 400,000 dopamine receptors. Okay, So we're going to make this 400,000. So when this little baby is born, whether it's born in a very dysfunctional family or a very healthy family, whenever this baby is born and it's under stress, at 400,000 sites, whenever it's under stress, the baby's brain fully produces dopamine. The dopamine takes off down the nerve pathway, and that little baby's brain processes stress. The only difference between these two brains at birth with the A1 allele, all that means is that this little baby is born with about a 70% load of dopamine at birth than this brain. So that means, if for visual effects, if we say this is 70%, which we, you should, should really be about like this, but so it's easier to visualize. If we say this is 70% of dopamine receptors, this brain at birth. So whether it's born again in a functional family or dysfunctional family, anytime it's under stress, it fully fires its dopamine at 70% 70, 70 load. Okay, around 320,000 dopamine receptors. So this little baby is going through life firing dopamine, wham, at 320,000 sites anytime it's under stress. Okay, so it goes through life firing at three years old, five years old, 10 years old, and then maybe at, at 14 years old, somebody hands that little child a beer and they put a sip of beer in their mouth. Okay, and all of a sudden, wham, this little baby's brain gets a full firing of dopamine. And that child says, what the heck was that? It's almost like its body's been completely de-stressed for the very first time in its life. So um, it's a full firing of dopamine. But a child can't drink every day at 13, 14 years old. So it goes back to this brain. OK, 14, 15, maybe at 16 years old, it has another drink, alcohol, or maybe tries a cigarette, has a drink, and wham, it fires dopamine again. And that, ba that child's little brain says, Oh my God, I remember that feeling. I remember exactly how I felt. I'm de-stressed. Life seems to be not so difficult, and they get very focused. And the brain says, whatever that substance is, you need that to feel normal. You need that to feel grounded. You need that to, to um, not be so stressed. So it goes back to this brain. So then the brain says, give me another drink, OK? Whether that's Kool-Aid or alcohol or or whatever it is, it's the substance of the brain altering substance of alcohol versus Kool-Aid. It's alcohol that will fire that mechanism. Okay, so it says put that particular liquid in your mouth. So it drinks it again, wham, and it drinks it again, wham. So what happens is that the brain is utilizing alcohol to feel normal or to be grounded or to be de-stressed or to be focused. So it drinks again, wham, and it drinks again, wham. And what happens through time is it starts firing and firing and firing that mechanism. What happens through time is that the good receptors start getting damaged. So now all of a sudden, this is why tolerance goes up. Now all of a sudden, by the time the child reaches 21, 22 years old, depending on how much they've used, 
now all of a sudden when the receptors are only firing at a smaller amount, they're, they're realizing they're, they're needing twice as much alcohol to fire, have that same feeling, to fire that same mechanism. So now all of a sudden they're, they're drinking twice as much, wham, and drinking twice as much again, wham. Now five more years goes by and they damage even greater. Now they're at three times their concentration of alcohol to get the same effect. So now they're drinking three times as much to fire those receptors, wham. So eventually what happens is they call it the naked brain through time. Whether that takes five years, 10 years, 15 years, depending on how much is used and how much is damaged. If you add other substances to that, poly substances like cocaine or methamphetamines or um, heroin, it damages their receptors much, much faster through time than just specifically alcohol alone. So eventually they get to the naked brain. So what the IVs are, because they are the exact gamma globulin of these damaged neurotransmitter filaments, there were these four men that actually won a Nobel Prize on the mechanism, have proven that 10 IV infusions, because they are the same proteins, not only completely rebuild the damage sites, which is really phenomenal, and you're firing like this, but they've shown that that in 10 IV infusions, you not only rebuild the damaged sites, but you stabilize new sites. So your brain is producing dopamine at the same concentration as the non-addictive brain. So now there's no more room for alcohol or drugs. Your brain is producing dopamine like this brain. So, um, so you don't have to drink or use to get your dopamine to feel normal. Your brain's producing it. At, from, the, at, from the very first to the very beginning of the day so you don't have to chase dopamine, it's already producing it. So that's how the IV infusions work.